But then, while we are talking about this, you could find other people. I mean, when delivering, still delivering the message uh, from inside the Egyptian street, other people and some economic analysts and uh, people saying that uh, where could we find some successful experiences? who lifted up the subsidies in their countries um, or uh, uh, were granted the IMF loan but they did not succeed. All the experiences surrounding us in the world were failures uh, as uh, uh, countries who were granted loans from IMF. And one of the major uh, uh, experiences uh, that we could uh, take a look at uh, was the uh, 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 Russia, for example, okay. and uh, parts of uh, South America. Okay. and Greece and I mean other countries so the, the, this raised doubts in the streets especially with the hiking prices okay. uh, and the, okay. the case so, of plateau in the uh, income of the uh, uh, governmental employee employees I mean we have we have to set expectations correctly and what I like about the president has done ever since day one even through the campaigning time before he became president uh, through the elections uh, he's always been trying to set the expectations straight, meaning that we have tough times ahead, and that's that's the truth of the matter. I mean, let's I mean let's look let, let's look at some numbers, okay? Mm. So, the, the governmental sector, January twenty fourth, two thousand eleven, uh, total salaries eighty billion. Right now, two hundred and fifty billion. Okay, so it's four times as much. Okay, mm. so. Uh, Included a lot of people, taken over a lot of people into the into the into the government uh, sector. Uh, subsidy uh, subsidy spending, okay. Um, January twenty fourth, two thousand and eleven, was was the tunes of fifty to sixty uh, billion. Now subsidy spending, one hundred and seventy billion. So, countries doing more in terms of actual in terms of actual subsidy and actual work on uh, on those on those areas. However. What you need to look at in terms of the actual IMF experience, uh, one of the bright side is the experience that Brazil had. Uh, so basically, what Brazil did is, it's important for the IMF to understand, or it's important for the I in order for the IMF to be involved, is for them to understand is that what money is being paid is being paid for an actual structural reforms. Structural reforms meaning that this money is not going to go into a vicious circle. So we're not gonna, they're not gonna lend us money in order to buy some wheat, to bake some bread, to eat, and, right. and, but this this is a never-ending story because Import, there, yeah. I mean, importation or yeah, importing is, yeah, and exporting. Yeah, this, this is, is not, a, yeah. here is the very uh, this is not going to work. Idea. What they what they want to ensure is that if they're going to lend us some money, we're going to restructure our budget in a way where this money is not going to go directly into subsidies. We're not going to take IMF money in order for us to subsidize people importing goods at uh, eight pounds and eighty-eight piastres this is not going to work. So if you look at the, at the, at the Brazilian experience, it's, been, it's actually been a success. It's one, it's one of the mm. successful experiences uh, mm. uh, dealing with IMF. And to be honest, as a parliamentarian, although the parliament still needs to approve the IMF loan, it's not a, it's not a fact of reality according to uh, Article 127 of the Constitution unless the parliament approves it. So, I mean, we're still in preliminary phases with the, with the IMF, whether or not we've received the first tranche. Mm. It, it has no bearing because the parliament still needs to approve this particular loan. However, I have to say that I'm cautiously optimistic about the actual IMF involvement because you have to recognize that during the time of ex-president Morsi, uh, there have been so many approaches that the presidency at that time tried to make with the IMF and the IMF would not come near Egypt. Okay? so. The actual involvement of the IMF is actually giving, giving this country an actual positive outlook that we actually have a credible progress in place. Because in 2012, 2013, the IMF would not approach Egypt at all. But now, because we have a president uh, who's uh, been uh, fairly and democratically elected and is incredible, we have a parliament which has been uh, credible and which has been uh, actually fairly and democratically elected. So you have the actual executive and legislation branch and the parliament and then the parliament in place. Now IMF is actually doing business with us, and uh, it's 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 important to recognize that this is actually a very positive move. Of course, borrowing is never uh, borrowing is never positive in its own, but exactly. it's a fact. But it's a fact of reality that we have an endemic budget deficit, 
and we need to work on rectifying this over time. But then again, if you look over uh, uh, the, this uh, sta uh, situation of borrowing, like I like the, the, the term that you gave it, or the loan, uh, um, world experiences, we could say that uh, the, you talked about the first tranche. We can never be granted loans without applying or complying with the conditions that the IMF Correct. have set for the country that is about to be granted those loans like uh, for example uh, um, uh, controlling how the money is spent one Correct. of the cases is not spending them or on, on national projects because it uh, consumes uh, liquidity Correct. so there are there are conditions Correct. for this loan that has to be uh, taken very seriously and uh, uh, implemented uh, very strictly Maybe it could not be as suitable at that time as we're coming out of two revolutions. That's why we're sourcing, uh, we're diversifying into the sourcing of loans. That's why we deal with World Bank. If I, I, IMF, financial, I, IMF finances, uh, uh, finances uh, uh, structural, uh, structural changes and uh, directly uh, budget related, World Bank will finance actual projects. So mm. that's why we're mixing and matching between finances. It is very important and crucial for Egypt to be involved with uh, with the IMF, because the IMF will help Egypt shore a lot of the uh, uh, financial, a lot of financial practices, and it actually will help govern uh, a lot of our monetary policy. So, I take a contrary approach. A lot of people, a lot of people think about IMF as a colonial power. Well, no, IMF is not a colonial power. They're not trying to get Egypt to do something that we don't want to do. At the end of the day, they want to establish a win-win situation, okay? And we always have to remember, mm. we, it, the IMF did not come looking for us. We went looking for them. And that's their role. I mean, their role has been historically to be involved with government to help bring about structural reforms. So we're going to have to comply with what we believe as a sovereign country, what we believe is, is correct and fair and equitable for us to do, and we will do it. If we believe there are terms which are not good for us to do, Egypt its government and its president is not going to sacrifice uh, the welfare of its people in order to get a loan. I mean, and that's something which I, I, I am absolutely sure of. Right. Shall we look over the health file? Absolutely. Do you have uh, uh, reservations over the health file because Egyptian people have? Uh, the, I mean, the, the, the Egyptian citizens. The health. I think the, that file you have, you would have your hands full yeah. monitoring. The health, the health segment has a uh, has a, has also a pandemic issue, which was, which all the segments are suffering from, which we suffer from from the actual devaluation. The currency devaluation has brought about an increase in a lot of the uh, segments. For example, we have uh, renal dialysis. I, I'm I'm an MP. I represent Omraneya from Giza. In Giza. We have over 60,000 people, patients, who do renal dialysis uh, twice or three times on a weekly basis. So the actual subsidy that the government pays per person is 140 pounds per session. Now those 140 pounds are now not enough at all because the centers which are providing them with the renal dialysis can no longer continue to be operative, can no longer function on 140 pounds per session. I mean, the actual money is close to 200 and 220. So uh, each session, each, each center is in deep need of getting further subsidy. Uh, you mean public hospitals or centers? Uh, wh whether, pub center? whether public or private centers. Because public because should be working on uh, health insurance. I mean, still, because that's why people pay tax for it and it's applied still, everywhere but in the world. they need to redeem, whether public or private, mm -hmm. they're redeeming per session from the government. I mean, there are, there are rack rates. There are actually rate cards for each activity because each hospital, whether private or public, will redeem this money uh, from, uh, from the government mm. against sessions which are delivered. In this sense, they were doing 140 per session. 140 is never enough now after the increase in prices and the equipment and the supplies. So finally yesterday, the government and the cabinet has taken a, 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 the decision to raise the subsidy on healthcare by 4.5 billion pounds in order to account for the fight against virus C, which we've been doing a very good uh, job at as a, uh, at a country, uh, the uh, actual uh, health care increases for renal dialysis. Mm. And uh, if, if, what's your own assessment? Because this could, if you like to elaborate more on that particular point, raising the subsidies uh, over, I think, uh, I think it's over uh, the health insurance or over some... It's, some? it's, basically, uh, it's basically raising the allotment uh, mm. for for health insurance in general by 4.5 billion 
mm. and this is to serve several segments. For example, renal dialysis will benefit about 600, 600 million pounds will be allotted to renal dialysis. Uh, you have about a billion which will be raised to the fight against uh, virus C and uh, the provision of the Sovaldi uh, uh, drug uh, because we're targeting the eradication of this uh, particular uh, disease uh, within uh, the coming uh, 20 years. Uh, so there is more that needs to be done in this particular field and its finances. Two segments which are very investment or not investment, which are very money sensitive, education mm -hmm. and healthcare. Education and healthcare. So uh, the remedy for education and healthcare is always money, it's always spending. So it, again, we're going to start uh, off with uh, our main uh, question that we started off with episode. Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time, but I'm going to leave you with the promise that we can continue on the educational file uh, later on with more episodes, uh, uh, Your Excellency, uh, uh, Minister, uh, Member of Parliament, uh, Dr. Mohamed Fouad, and official spokesperson for a law of the party. Thank you very much. And uh, I guess we can elaborate more on educational file in uh, another episode of uh, Egypt's Parliament. It's Thank been, you, sir. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It was my pleasure. And I guess this is where we end this edition of Egypt's Parliament. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Until then, goodbye.